If there's one thing I've always loved about modeling trains, it's the opportunity to make them look a little bit more realistic or grimy or just dirty overall. I'm a big fan of weathering, and today I thought it'd be fun to show you guys how I've weathered my Bachman Douglas, since the Bachman Donald and Douglas are the most recent reviews on my channel. And while admittedly I haven't really gotten around to doing much with Donald yet, with Douglas being my favorite of the two, I have put a little bit more time and effort into that model. So let's go ahead and get into what all I've done. As you can see, the uh, Douglas body itself hasn't really been modified much. The only thing I've done to the actual body is apply a matte coat, specifically the Mr. Hobby Super Matte, as well as removed his face and removed the chassis. The tender I've already started a little bit on, well, honestly, more than a little bit. I went ahead and did a good bit of weathering on this to get a feel for what I wanted to do for the entire model. And that's a good little trick I've learned for models like this, to start with the tender and from that follow up with the rest, since the body is normally the more important part. To do the weathering on Douglas, I'll be using a Monroe Models Mini Weathering Kit. The one I happen to have here comes with Desert Sand, Dirty White, Dark Earth, and New Fresh Rust. Basically everything you'd need for any model. But for Douglas, I won't be using the Dark Earth. I won't really need the brown. I'll also be using my go-to, of course, that being the Stardust Black Powder. To this day, I've not found anything that works better for soot or coal dust weathering, and of course, the Mr. Hobby Top Coat, which I mentioned earlier, as well as multiple paintbrushes, since I do my best not to mix the powders. At least directly, I try to do that more on the model. And the main goal here is just to produce something a little bit more unique, as well as realistic, so I will be using the uh, original models as reference, but also kind of doing my own thing. I also want to give a huge shout out to Sodor Rai Modeler and his blog spot, as recently he released a page on how he modified his Donald and Douglas, and it served as a big help as well as inspiration. So I'll have that linked in the description for anybody who's curious. And let's get back into weathering the model. Like I said before, I'm trying to go for a little bit more uh, realism with this model. So doing my best not to overdo it, I apply a bit more rust and a bit more powder in um, areas where it would make sense. For example, a little bit of soot on the smokestack or in front of the boiler door, and then using the white in spots where it would have been on the uh, actual models.
to go, sir. Captain Avatar's battleship will be on the Mars orbit in... Once I've reached a pretty good stopping point with the body, I go back to do a little bit more on the tinder. Using the yellow and the rust, I focus a little bit more on the inside of the tinder and try to focus it more in the creases of the foot plate. And where I've added a little bit of extra coal, I do my best to weather around that as well. I also go back over the undercarriage and other parts of the model to make sure all of the powders that I set before are really there, and really help to pronunciate the weathering I want it to have. The twins are notoriously hardworking goods engines, and I want that to be exemplified with this model. Go, sir. Now, once I'm satisfied with the tinder, I go back to the body shell. I haven't applied the top coat yet, so everything that I've done so far can be removed or changed, and that's kind of the way I like it to be. And honestly, lucky for me, since the weathering I did around the whistle was completely uneven. So I not only go back and fix this, but add a little bit more around the foot plate on the roof, a bit more black soot on the boiler, just, just go over it one more good time and make sure it's all really there. I guess it's better that you guys see it than hear me try to explain it. Once that was completed, the only thing left to do was add the top coat. 
And with that, the Douglas model was semi-completed. While the weathering portion may be done, there was a little bit more I decided to do. For example, I used a hole puncher to add some uh, cab windows. That was a super fun detail. And in time, plan to either repaint his original face or get him some new ones. Perhaps I'll even move his nameplates and give him handrails. But for now, this is the model. And I have to say, for being so basic, it's something I'm quite satisfied with. A good bit of weathering can really turn that around. And it's really fun to take a basic model and turn it into something that's basically anything but. Or at the very least, a dirtier, simpler model, I guess. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the process I've taken with my Douglas so far. I did add a little bit more coal inside of his tinder, but would like to add even more than I did, so I guess that doesn't really count. Weathered up and hopefully ready to turn some heads at the next train show I take him to. And hopefully you guys enjoyed figuring out the process in how I did so. If you guys did, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content. Huge shout out to my patrons, and with all that being said, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. We can't drive sheep down the line. They wouldn't go straight. Silly, said Rex. We don't drive sheep. We take their wool in bales on trucks. It'll be easy. The small controller laughed. Very well, Rex, he said. You seem to know all about it. So you shall take the first train. <laughs>